Yeah, what's up guys, this is Jamie. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to do another Java tutorial. Uh, I've just been really busy lately. But uh, I'm back now, ready to create a billion tutorials on Java, showing you um, the basics all the way up to developing practical applications for things, and maybe get into some app development much later on. Um, so yeah, basically this tutorial is going to go on for hopefully no more than 10 minutes, and it's just going to go over if-else statements and the switch statement as well. Now, switch statements aren't as commonly used as if else or if statements um, but still you might find a scenario where you want to use that instead um, which is perfectly acceptable so I'll show you both in this tutorial rather than splitting it up and I'm hoping it's only going to take five minutes each uh, hoping being the word is probably going to go way over that anyway um, let's get started so the first scenario we're going to do is demonstrating an if else statement um, and it's going to take the user's age, like it's going to ask the user for an age, and depending on the age that they put in, it's going to put them into a different group. Um, and the easiest way to explain this is just to show you. So we're going to use the scanner again. So scanner, scanner equals new scanner system dot in. Uh, again, if you don't recognize any of this stuff, which you should, except the if statement up until now, go back and check my previous tutorials, because I'm pretty sure I've gone over all this before. I know it was months ago, but my memory is not that bad, and I'm sure we have used scanner before. Um, so yeah, scanner, scanner, system, dot in. Um, and then we're going to do system dot, uh, dot print line, enter your age. Now, this is a bit slightly different, I think, from what we've done before. What we're going to do is store the scanner, the user's input in a variable. And to do that, we're going to type int age equal to uh, scanner, which is our scanner variable, dot next. Next int. There. So that's basically just saying, like, um, yeah, the user's input is going to be an integer, hopefully. If it's not, it's going to crash. Um, but basically, just get the next integer value that they input. And now, what we want to do is handle that input. Um, so, what we're going to do is say if age is less than 18, um, and I will explain the full syntax of the if statement throughout this tutorial just once I've finished uh, coding it, because that'll be easier. So, if age is less than 18, system dot out dot print line you are in group one right now we come out of there and go else if bracket age is greater than or equal to 18 and so for uh, multiple conditions in the same thing you do double ampersand um, and age is less than 60 system dot out dot my timing is awful. Basically, I got a new computer, and I'm not used to the keyboard. Um, my laptop keyboard was so much closer together, so I keep making typos. But anyway, um, you are in group two. And finally, you want to type else. Well, god damn, see about my typing. Else, um, system dot now dot print line you are in group 3. Right, so I'll just save it there and explain this to you guys. So for an if statement you would start with if um, and then in these two brackets here, so in the normal brackets you would have the condition that needs to be met. In this case the condition is age less than 18. So if that condition is true you then proceed to in the curly brackets um, have what happens if that is true. Yeah. So in this case, it will print out you're in group 1. Now it says, okay, this isn't true, what do I do next? It goes, else if age is greater than or equal to 18 and the age is less than 60, do this. Um, so it says basically, okay, that's not true, is this true? If it is, print out you're in group 2. Then what it comes to is this else, and else is basically what to do if that isn't true and that isn't true, do this. So else is anything, in this case, over 60. Uh, will be in group 3. So let's just demonstrate that to you. And in fact, um, I will clear that because that's for the switch statement next. And you'll notice that 4 
um, came up in December, but I'll explain that in a minute. Anyway, on with this one. Enter your age. So I'm going to put in 7 to start with. You're in group 1. Good. Because 7 is less than 18, so you're in group 1. Next, enter your age. I'm going to put in 18. You're in group 2. That's also correct because age is greater than or equal to. That's what that bit means in there. Greater than or equal to 18. Um, you're in group 2. So, yep, that's perfectly correct. And run it again. Uh, enter your age. If I put in um, 19, just for clarity, you're in group 2 because that's over 18 and it's also less than 60. Um, run it again. So now I'm going to do over 60, so we'll do 65. You're in group 3. And again, it's saying this isn't true, this isn't true, this is, you're in group 3. And I'll show you one more thing as well. So if I go in and it says enter your age and some smart arse decides to go, okay, 7 as in the word, not the number, and hit enter, you'll get this exception. We haven't covered exception handling yet, but I will in the future. Just ignore it just now. Um, this can be handled neatly, but again, that's not part of this tutorial. You've got to input the number, because it's expecting, at this point, is it expecting an integer. It's not expecting a word. Um, so yeah, that's all that means, if that comes up for you guys. It means just enter the damn <laughs> number, not the word. Okay, so hopefully you understand if statements. Um, sorry, if else statements, and you can have multiple ones of these, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, you can have like else if, else if, else if, else, um, if you've got multiple conditions, um, but that's really it, that's basically the syntax for an if statement, if condition output, else if condition output, else output, yeah, simple, right, cool, now let's get on to switch statements, which is really bugging me at the moment, because I've not really used them, but I still should probably show you guys that they exist. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this part. And the system that I'm going to do for a switch statement isn't going to be the same based on the same system. It's going to be, um, in fact, it could be. No, no, it couldn't. It doesn't matter. That, that's a lie. It couldn't. Um, this, this system is going to be based on the months. So it's going to say enter the current month. Uh, no, sorry. Enter the number of the month, which will be 1 to 12. 1 being January, 12 being December, as you should all know. Um, and then what we're going to do is have int month equal to next int. Okay? And we're also going to have a variable here, which is a string variable, and it's going to be called um, string month. Okay? And now, all we're doing here, you should recognize this again. We've got a scanner, we've just got we're asking the user to do something, we're saying it's that. And also, we've got a variable called string month. Right. So now, what we're going to do is switch. So, start a switch statement, which you'll see very quickly how it works and what it does. Let's type in switch, then in two brackets, what we want to switch. So, we want to switch the month. Then you would have the curly brackets and hit enter. Right. So, this is a very long, tedious process. Um, and a lot of typing, but I'm going to try and get it done as quickly as I can. So now in here, you want the case, and the case is basically the scenario that occurs. Sorry. So case one, and then colon at the end. You then have string month equals January. January. Yeah. So basically, that's saying if the month that's input is one, so if the user is input one, um, that is going to be January. Okay, hopefully you'll get the idea of it. I will go through it at the end, and then you want to have a break in here. Um, and then, I'll just go shift alt f. Ooh, it formats it quite neatly actually. Okay, right. Uh, I'll see how it formats in a minute. A case 2, string month equals February. You'll see that what I mean by, by this being a tedious process. Um, then another break. And in fact, I'm going to cheat a little. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste and then change the values. You can probably do the same and get away with it. So there's going to be a total of 12 numbers. So this is 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to scroll back up and it changes number to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, why won't I 
actually two in here. What the hell? How many have I got? One, two. Why did I miss out? Oh, if I screw this up majorly. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh. I want extra. God knows how many have I got. Yeah. How strange. <laughs> oh well. Get rid of that. We only need up to twelve months. We don't need any more than that. So hopefully you're getting the idea. So month if they put in one, January is the variable. Put in two, February. Now we're gonna go March. April, and as I said, this really is a tedious task, and that's why it's easier to copy and paste. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And there we go. So, uh, uh, actually, no, there's one more thing we need to do. Basically, we haven't actually assigned that. That saying variable month is not used. We'll use it in a minute. So what we're going to do is display it. But we also need something called default. And that's basically saying default uh, string month equals not a month. And that's basically if we put in anything other than 1 to 12, um, the month doesn't exist. So shift alt f again. And by the way, if you're using that means and you don't know what shift alt f is, I don't know if I mentioned it before. Shift alt f basically just formats it nicely. Um, basically, just if you've got code all over the place and it doesn't look neat, shift alt f will. I believe it's shift alt. -F. Yeah, on my keyboard is shift alt f anyway. It'll format it nicely. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come out of the switch statement. So down here and type in system dot out dot print line. Um, string month. There we go. So we've got no errors, this should be fine. Again, just to make sure, so we're switching the month, which is the user input, it's the integer that they've input. Then we're basically setting the variable string month to the string value of that month by using case. And we've got to break at each point just because that's the way the statement works. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, I'm not really overly chuffed with switch statements. I don't use them very often. Uh, it's not that I don't see the point of them, I can see the point of them like this, but again, I don't use them very often. Um, it's just so for you to know about. So anyway, let's run this, see what it does. Enter the number of the month. So we'll put in 5, that should be May, I believe. May. Let's run it again. 12, should be December. December. Let's put in 1, just to make sure, January. Okay. Now let's put in something like 13. 13th month. Not a month. There we go. We know it works. Coolio. So yeah, that's all I was going to go over today. I have gone over my time of 5 minutes each by 3 minutes, 17 seconds apparently. Um, but that's because of copy and paste and doing this switch statement. So yeah, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, deal with it. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry again for not making tutorials in a long, long time. I'm back on them now though, and um, yeah, I look forward to you watching them in future and building again some practical applications. It's going to get a lot more exciting after this, because now you know pretty much the basics. I think I'll go over exception handling next, and then we'll get designing some system of some sort. Um, so yeah, that's the plan, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.